up here? Do you recognize how beautiful y'all are? This is astounding. I gotta, I'm gonna step out here and say this is like the best Harvey Milk Festival of all time. Am I right? Um, in 2001, I took a trip and uh, I hitchhiked across the country because I didn't think that the way that our world works um, works very well. And I wanted to kind of seek out some new ways and kind of find out what my path was and, and how I could uh, live better in the world. And so I traveled a bit and hitchhiked across. And when I got to Tennessee, I was hitchhiking through and I was invited to visit this place called Short Mountain, a little uh, intentional community. And um, um, actually I went to Pumpkin Hollow first. The Short Mountain is a radical fairy commune in the middle of Tennessee and they live off the grid, and they build their own houses, and they grow their own food, and they have solar panels and, and rain barrels, and it's just an amazing group of people that make all of, a lot of the people here today look like Republicans. These guys were so flamboyant, and yet so loving, and creative, and amazing, and wonderful people. It was astounding. And one of them um, performed a 45-minute monologue, a play he'd written, about Harvey Milk. And it was the first time I'd ever heard of Harvey Milk. But I was astounded by this guy who, who had such courage and such dedication and was so inspiring to so many people. And it means a lot to me that I can be here today and, and, and share this event with you to celebrate his life and his legacy and um, the strides he has made for the LBGT community and um, for, for all of us as, as people to create more equality and more understanding. And um, it's just my honor to be here today. Thank you. And um, that we are doing this in Five Points Park is equally astounding to me. Because I don't know if y'all have noticed, but there's been a lot of stuff going on in this park. And it's been the center of a lot of attention for good and bad reasons. For me, this is where um, a couple of aliens gave me an Australian mind now a few years ago and taught me to see the world from a different perspective. And um, I wrote a little book about it called How to Survive an Escalarian Mind Mel. But I have to let you know that it is fiction. Because there are two really big falsities in the book. Not talking about the aliens, that part really happened. But when they gave me this Escalarian Mind Mel, it was in a bench in Five Points Park. The book is fiction. So we no longer have benches here. And in the book, I also said that Sarasota really never had that big of an issue with the homeless. I don't know what I was thinking back then, but I guess at the time, maybe it was true from my perspective. But if y'all haven't noticed, we've had some issues lately. A lot of big issues. And one of the reasons that that labyrinth is here today is because I believe that it is um, a conduit for our solutions to this problem, to this challenge that we face. That um, labyrinth over there, the labyrinth of the unbroken path, and that unbroken path is the path that all of us are on, regardless of your tradition, your religion, your culture, your upbringing, your ideology, your philosophy, whatever it is you think, all these ideas you have collected, these images are beautiful and wonderful, but beyond all of them, we're all on the same path. We're all trying to be the best people that we can be. Because we're called to be the best people that we can be. And because we know that we become the best people that we can be. We get to live the best life that we can live. And that's really all of us, any, any of us want. And the more we can want that for one another, then the more we're all going to get it. And we're all going to be able to be the best people that we can be and live in the best community that we can live in and just experience life as it was meant to live, to be lived. Um, thank you. So with that labyrinth, there are messages in there for you. There are messages that are meant to speak to your heart, that are meant to speak to your spirit. And they come from luminaries that are far beyond me. Very few of my words are in that. I just share the same spirit, as do many of you here today. And so what I want you to do is go through that labyrinth and I want you to let it speak to you because there are, are centuries worth of wisdom 
in those walls. And it's all made of repurposed material. Those are just pallets and pieces of wood that I had left over from making a fence. And pieces cut out of magazines that were going to be thrown away. And from all of that seeming garbage, we were able to create art over there today. And I want you guys to be artists. Today and every day. Today especially, I want you to go over there and I want you to let us speak to you and I want you to get some paint or some chalk or some markers and I want you to share your message in that labyrinth of the unbroken path for all the people who are going to go follow behind you. And I want you to be where you can be and share that message and spread your light. Because that's what we're here for, folks. We're here to shine. All of us. Every single one of us. I thank you guys for shining today. Now after today, that labyrinth is going to be de deconstructed and moved out. And we've got about um, 3.4 acres um, of property north of Gillespie Park. And the owner of that property, he wants to do something to help this homeless situation because he, like me, doesn't think it's cool that we have people who sleep on the streets in Sarasota. We're one of the richest cities in, in Florida, if not in the country. And we have people that live on our streets. I'm a native of this town. This is my hometown. I'm not cool with that. That does not sit well with me. And we have this opportunity now to create something that's never been done before. We don't want to make just a tent city. We don't want to make a place for people to crash. What we're creating is a school of life. We want to teach these people the, the struggles that they go through that there's another way. There's another way to breathe. There's another